Hello folks, this is an informal attempt to explain what a Gitpod workspace is, using a fictional character called Niage. My name is Alejandro, I teach code for a living, my Twitter is AleSanchezR, and I co-founded a website called 4Gigs.com where you can learn or upgrade your coding skills in a live real-time environment community. So this is Niage and Niage's computer. He codes every day on it. The computer has a screen and a CPU tower. This screen can be replaced with a TV, another screen, or some computers like the Apple Mini don't even come with a screen. So we will take out the screen from this explanation. Niage computer can have a Windows, Apple, Linux, Chrome OS, or some other operating systems. Also, those operating systems can have several versions. So if Niage wants to join a coding class with many people or a working environment in a company with teammates, he will encounter that each of them may have a different operating system. And even if they have the same operating system, they may not have the same version. They will be working on the same coding stack but the coding stack through the years has become more and more difficult to set up. Now, if you want to code an HTML website, you need Webpack, Babel, and probably a component framework like React. Or if you want to do some backend, you need some just unit testing, databases, different versions of Node, different versions of Python, Java, etc. So installing all this stuff in an Apple Monterey is different than installing it on a Windows version 11. But even if they manage to install that, that probably will take them several hours, and they're happy about it, when they eventually run the code, they'll see that the code doesn't always consistently output the same results on each of those computers. In addition, they have a copy of the same code on each of their hard drives. So if one of them forgets to sync every night the code, they may end up having different conflicts, making the development process more difficult and frustrating. Meet the Gitpod workspace. If Niach decides to use Gitpod workspaces, his day will always start and end in the same way. He will start visiting github.com and choosing a repository code or project that he wants to work on. Then he will start the today's workspace by pressing the green button for Gitpod. He will wait for the consistent workspace creation. That consistent, consistent basically means that he will always have an Ubuntu computer or any other computer that he decides to have or the entire team the latest version of the code and a setup ready to code already. This workspace will download to his computer in a browser or desktop application in the coding editor that he likes. He will start coding on his favorite coding IDE and then when he's finished, he will sync back to GitHub probably by the end of the day. That's it. No setup, no nothing, just coding. Let's go over the process one more time in five steps, but now with a real life example. First, you will go to github.com and find the coding project repository you want to work with. In this case, I want to start doing some JavaScript exercises I found at 4gigs.com. Then, you will find the Gitpod button, but wait! Please make sure that you have write access over that repository, or you won't be able to sync back your code later. If you don't have access, don't worry. You can create a fork for that repository. I already have my fork, so I will go ahead and open it. Press the Gitpod button and the workspace will start creating. Gitpod is now creating your workspace. It may take a couple of minutes the first time. Bear in mind that this workspace will contain everything you need to start coding. No installation, no setup, no nothing. 
The second time, it will be a lot faster, I promise. This workspace in particular will contain a Linux computer with Node.js 16 installed and the VS Code coding editor. Okay, so we're almost ready. You can already see that VS Code is initializing here. The last step for the workspace setup is installing the JavaScript and Node libraries that Gitpod knows that I will need in order to code on this exercise. This is all happening automatically. Now I can start coding on the code needed to complete this exercise. But Gitpod works with almost any other setup, any coding language, even if you need localhost access to your project. Let me finish this exercise, run it, and then I will sync back my code updates back to Gitpod. You can do this using VS Code Git tool on the left side of the screen, or by using the traditional git commit and push commands. Once I finish syncing, I can just close the workspace and forget about it. The code will already be on Gitpod and GitHub. Tomorrow, if I want to work on it again, all I have to do is open a new workspace. Wait! But what if Niaj forgets to sync his code back or stand-ups from the computer and forgets to do it? Don't worry. You can go to gitpod.io slash workspaces and you will see a list of all the previous workspaces you have created from the past 14 days. You can reopen any workspace by clicking on the three dots and you can know which workspace has not been synced yet. But what if you're working on a team? If everyone follows the same method and every day creates a new workspace by going to GitHub and pressing on the Gitpod green button and then working on the same exact environment as before and commits and push and syncs to GitHub by the end of the day, everyone will stay in sync with the code. The same coding environment will be used for everyone and there will be no setup. Thank you very much for staying until the end of this video and I hope you like it. Remember to follow me on social media, on Twitter specifically with R, or joining 4 if you wanna learn in a community real time and live environment.